Hello, hello, this is Steve Dolman here, and it's time for a little bit of, uh, maybe it's too much of an ego trip to call it a master class, but this is my take on Fire Ice. Fire Ice is a deck that's very close to my heart. I have won two different regionals with it, took it to nationals, and uh, for a very long time went undefeated with the deck. Uh, I really, really love it. It's super aggressive, very good at cutting off your opponent, and if you are at all interested in a sort of a tempo play, a lot like sort of Delver strategies in Magic, then it is absolutely the deck for you. And oh my goodness, we're joined by Andrew Needham, who's got fire ice dice for this Hello. very occasion. Uh, let's do a, let's do a two dice high roll. So that a, is uh, I don't five. I don't even care. It's a five. <laughs> let's beat that. I beat that. That's okay, I'm going to go first yeah. because that's what this deck does. You absolutely have to go first because you want to be the one who plays your aggressive threat before your opponent basically plays anything. I wouldn't say that it's a bad matchup to be in an aggro against aggro, although this deck is very good against slower control decks and, and anything that aims to set up or keep a bunch of viable long game summons like Vilvor in hand. I think that its aggro game is equally quite good because of cards like Glazia mm -hmm. and to some extent said Reigns is very good at taking back initiative. Patience. This is my hand. I don't want to say too much and give things away to my opponent, but it's not a good hand because it doesn't have the right kind of efficient disruption. And also, as much as it is an aggressive deck, I very rarely play forwards on turn one. So That's my hand and I'm going to keep it. Okay. Things. Because it contains things. I like the sound of things. Right. I'm just having a bit of a think about this. I'm going to chuck away a Black Waltz for an Edgar, and I'll pass there. The aim with this deck is to get locked down on turn two with a discard, by which I mean you have two other Final Fantasy VI characters on the field on entry, and if you make those characters be backups, partly that sets you up for a nice long game, but also it's a lot harder for your opponent to disrupt by destroying backups at instant speed so that Locke doesn't get a discard on entry. So two backups. So Sabin and Glazio on Setzer to bring back Sabin, nice. and then Sabin on Edgar. I'll never no, say no to that. Turn there. Right. Cool. Uh, I wonder. There's a lot of cool things I could do here. I'm going to go Genesis and yeah. one for Gastelian Empire Sid. And uh, you have to search out the lock. Like, lock, lock it. Lock warps games because he makes your opponent want to kill it right away on entry. And uh, that is more than a little bit scary. Lots of decks just cannot handle that. Now, I could play lock for a little bit of overpay. Three cards in hand. But actually, I think what I'm going to do is lock and Duke Larg. It's not often that I think this is a really good idea, but I'm going to play Setzer because I want to slightly out resource you, and I'd be discarding the Duke Larg anyway if I wanted to play lock. So I would rather go for on curve, bearing in mind what I have in my hand. So uh, I'm just going to pass there. I will comment a little bit more on the contents of my hand and how I would have played in a moment once all of its contents have been revealed to my opponent. One. So this is entirely your chance to play a lock of your very own and maybe try and swing things back around because I've taken very much the defensive position here. A Kuja! Okay. Kuja's a card I don't play in my list at the moment, but I have in the past. I really like it. It's kind of similar to Garland that we were saying just before. Uh, it's kind of like a weird compromise between Garland and uh, I guess maybe Celeste, the, the new rare Celeste, mm. in terms of locking out something every combat. The, the downside is you have to pay for this, and sometimes it can seem quite expensive. The upside is that you have complete control over what you choose, whereas you don't with Garland. I'll pass turn there. That is what I very much like to hear. It's going to be three for lock. That's going to be the lies. Okay, cool. I think it is in my best interests to... This is kind of weird, actually. Um, I am going to give lock haste and attack. Now, I could do that by playing Sage, but then Edgar would be dull. And then if Edgar is dull, I don't have anything that can threaten the power buff. So, uh, yeah, Kuja is a little bit more problematic in that case. So, discard the Sage for Belias. I'll give Lock Haste that way just so I leave this open. Yep. And also, Bel oh, Belias is, is pretty swole. And I'll go to combat and attack no, for. Take damage. Sure. And a Lock of my own. And one more discard. I also draw off Lock triggers and I'll discard Duke Lock. Cool. Uh, that's a pass from me. That's mildly painful. Yeah, it is a little bit. Uh, I, I think that. Also leaving Edgar open means that I can't be Glazied here. Uh, killing Lock that way is not something you're going to be readily able to do. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else super relevant that that survives. But yeah, an 8k Lock is much scarier than not an 8k Lock. <laughs> okay, two on a Lancer unit to Dolphreeze. Oh. Lock. 
Just freeze? Yeah. Mm. Sure. Well then go to combat. Or attack with Kuja. By all means, through you come. Shiva. I play Shiva as a one of. Honestly, I think the card is a trap in a deck like this because you are trying to put on enough pressure that your opponent can't play many forwards anyway, and Shiva is only there as a last ditch effort in the games you are about to lose otherwise. However, those are not scenarios you want to arise, and so I think that playing more than one or more than a couple of copies is uh, a little bit of a trap. I'll discard Laswell for a Chaos. And I'll okay, down. well, you hit your three backups, and that is always concerning. I would really like to reclaim some kind of initiative in this game. I don't want you to get another combat step because if you do and Kuja freezes lock, that stops me from keeping your hand on zero. So I would very much like to play something a little bit more, I don't know, explosive. This is an option, but that gives too much priority. If I want to, to make a lot of use out of it, then uh, it's not really going to work. So I think the correct thing to do here is 6 for Veritas. I am not afraid of Veritas costing 6. Uh, Ver Veritas costing 6 effectively I will play that off 2 backups a lot of the time if it guarantees me some damage or guarantees I am very far ahead on board so given that you are now in complete top deck position and I am in top deck position we're both on 3 backups but I have 2 forwards one of which you must answer uh, I think that gives me quite a bit of uh, an ability to not care what you draw so I'm going to pass there on the end of your turn, I'll crack one. That's only during your turn. It is only during my turn. Okay. Almost all me discard, not knowing how cards. Almost all discard is only during your own turn, just because it would be really oppressive if you were consistently able to make people discard their hand before they even get to do anything. And because Garland creates a stack at the start of your opponent's first main phase, if you could respond to that with discard, yeah. it, it, they can't do anything about it and have to discard what they just drew from turn. So uh, to, basically, so people are allowed to play in a top deck war, you can only discard during your own turn. Glazia is an exception. Well, my main phase now, I'll yeah. use Lancer Unit. Sure, I uh, discard a Genesis, ain't even mad. Okay. I think it is very difficult to conceive of you playing anything here that digs you truly out of the scenario. We'll see. Doesn't. I'll pass turn now. Locke likes it when people pass turn. I'll go to combat mm -hmm. and attack on Locke. Once Locke has done two damage, he has entirely paid for himself and then a little bit. Yeah, the Edgar sometimes is a little bit of a dead draw. I think it's important enough for the function, but also the fact it's a Category 6 character that you really need to play three copies, but that doesn't make it feel any sweeter when those copies flog your hand and don't do much. So I'll attack on Veritas, and I'm going to pass turn there, quite content that I draw two cards per turn, and you are right now only drawing one. Net, net gain after Locke, you know. Locke is like a Scale Toad who can do damage. The deck is best played like that. Three for Gastelian Empire said. Okay. G said is quite versatile in this deck. It searches Sabin. Uh, I prefer the four CP Sabin because it's very good in bad matchups. Four CP Sabin is very good at punching through Camelot, who is a real problem when you can't dull and freeze it, and also is very good at punching through nine K knights in water. Uh, and in addition, like the, the the break stuff is occasionally good in every single matchup because it lets your lock threaten trading with 8Ks, except you don't actually trade anything away, that is a really good position to be in. Cool. Right. Uh, anything else? Going for going for the virtual 4CP on a lock? Okay. Uh, you have more than enough characters, so I have to discard something. I think VV is the most replaceable thing here. This in hand is a little bit more unique. Okay. Cool. I also had no cards in hand, so VV wouldn't be as useful in this turn. I don't like the fact that we would have to trade locks. That is a little bit saddening. I'm going to go to combat nonetheless and attack on Veritas. And depending on what I see, I may want to attack on lock anyway. I'll attack on lock and totally bluff the Belias. I'll take it anyway. I think that's probably discard. the right choice because you don't have anything to discard, but I do have things to discard uh, by lock hitting me. So, what I'm going to do here is. Castilian Empire said, and one for Garland. I am deathly afraid of a Glacia top deck here, so I'm leaving Edgar open. Rather than using three backups to pay for Garland, even though I could, I think that uh, making myself Glacia proof and a little bit harder to kill with VB combos uh, maybe is a thing. I'm just going to pass there. 
And what would you like to dull with Garden? I'm going to dull one of my ice backups. That seems fair. I mean, Chaos is a pretty versatile backup. Uh, there is functionally no difference between Castalian Empire second sets or once they resolve, but both of them are weaker than Chaos, and Edgar is the only backup that does something unique. And I really don't think you can afford to dull your own forwards at this point, so yeah. Two, three, and Celeste. That's even more problematic. Okay. And I'll do first turn there. Cool. I'll drop a turn and then I'll decide if I want to do garland things. <laughs> Hashtag just garland things. <laughs> okay, I am going to. This is a, a top secret thing going on here, but uh, it's uh, Derek Payton, our beloved Derek's birthday, and we've got this completely charming card. Give me just a second. To Derek. We love you. From Steve. Oh, yeah. You can leave your birthday wishes for Derek in the comments too. Make him nice enough and he might cry. I'll write it in a minute. As soon as I, <laughs> as soon as I figure out what I want to write. Uh, right. Uh, I had Garland's stack here. So... This is the kind of stage where Garland is not actually all that important. I think the difference between you having four and three backups is negligible. It would be different if you had a dull forward and I could uh, I could freeze that, but I'm I'm going to ignore Garland's trigger and before I do anything else, play a Duke Lark. That removes some of the need for me to to have lock. I'll go to combat and see how badly you want to avoid the bleeding. So I'll go to combat and attack on Veritas. Veritas. Veritas, for the most part, I am. You, you have no tricks available other than oh, yeah, Edgar. Yeah. So yeah, like you, you could block and make and it an 8k block. trade, but then you'd but also then lose, lose something, something else. Like you're still going to lose the forward. You're going to lose the ability to hold open Edgar for when lock attacks. Yeah, like you don't really have an option but to take this extra damage here yeah. because everything else just loses you basically the ability to trade with lock, and lock is the really dangerous uh, part here. I think. Yes, um. Hmm. Honestly, like, I feel enough damage has been done that I probably could just attack on lock here and see what happens. Mm. Another option would have been to not play Duke Lark, to attack on Garland. Obviously the same thing happens, except now you have to block Garland because otherwise you'll die. And then I can follow up with some burn in second main phase because the deck is so good at that. And it feels amazing when you trade a smaller insignificant body, especially VV, into something bigger. And then in second main phase, play some burn on top of that. That's kind of like the, the principle of fire ice. And you have to be comfortable making trades where you lose small guys if it takes out a big guy. Never trade on the defense. Uh, yeah, I'm going to attack on lock. You don't have any choice but no. to fodder something. It is your choice of who you fodder. I'm gonna block on lock. Sure. And then use Edgar. Uh, I'll take that trade. If I had a Belize, that would be an absolutely incredible time just to sling it out. And I honestly think attacking with Garland just to force another trade here is the smart thing to do because, like, one CP is not going to give you much of a difference, but that is a body that now you absolutely cannot play. And as soon as as soon as you can't play two bodies per turn, you lose to me having any removal. And that's basically checkmate, but uh, yeah, pass there. Veritas is just so difficult to block in a format so heavily dominated by 7Ks and 8Ks. Uh, if you have anything, that would be a good time to play it. Or uh, during an opponent's turn is, is a thing too. Glazia, so okay. I can do, and I'll freeze Veritas and force a discard. I'll discard a Garland. And I'll pass turn down. Cool. I would absolutely love something that gives haste on entry. Um, okay, what do we have here? I'm going to give you one more turn to play a forward. I'll pass there. None of these seem like really good things to play just now. This, for some weird reason, I won't. Uh, the other two, I think I would rather wait until a good opportunity arises. Just playing it just now doesn't really change all that much, because once Veritas thaws, it can attack anyway. I would much rather use my removal for removal. Well, as well. Targeting Veritas. Oh, great. Sure. And on the stack, I will ping that Veritas. That absolutely before. works. And I'll pass turn there. That sure. absolutely works too. Right. For long in my life, as long as possible. This kind of sucks because uh, <laughs> I am a little bit short on fire CP. Uh, I, I don't think I can really say it sucks when it's 6 1, but. 
Um, I think the best thing to do here is not let you keep things in hand. So I'll go for another lock for a discard. Veritas, that seems good. In a Veritas war, whoever plays Veritas second and obligates that the Veritas on the opponent's side of the field is the only thing to discard is uh, typically going to win. I'm just going to pass there. Slowly but surely, we are going to get to a position where you don't tip deck a forward or you don't leave up enough forwards. Alternatively, if I can get another lock in hand, there's, there's two here, but if I burst a Cecil or something like that, then uh, that's a little bit tricky. Archangel HM, bold. I'll go to combat. Sure. Attack on Lazo, targeting lock. Sure. Yep. Thing on the right I'll just take that. And I'll pass down there. So it was your intention to block with Archangel HM, however. Either Mirage Dive or something to dull. Vivi and Duncan. Uh, I'll pay for one of them here and uh, just chuck away some stuff for the Duncan to do enough damage and then I'll go to combat and Veritas seals it. Uh, it's it's difficult because this is a very aggressive deck and it feels like when you're not attacking you are losing or you're doing something incorrect but uh, I think that the likelihood of me in a five card hand having some way of getting rid of one forward was relatively high. Two forwards not so much. I think that uh, Laswell might have been better off just waiting back that turn because uh, <laughs> there comes a point you have to trade with the Veritas. So that is my take on Fire Ice. Uh, my deck list is in the description. I would be delighted to hear your thoughts on it and stuff like that. And if you have any experiences playing Fire Ice as well, please share them. We love your stories. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.